Erev Tov Harim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And friends, I wanted to just take a couple of moments here while we're in the process of traveling right now to discuss with you something that really has been bothering me because I see so many people totally missing the whole point when it comes to Jacob's trouble. And I'm planning on, as soon as I get back into Orlando, I want to readdress this subject very much deeper than what I'm going to discuss it now. But I wanted to kind of give you a little heads up because so many people, when we think of Jacob's trouble, we're thinking about modern day Israel and Israel really being bombarded by all their Arab neighbors. And this is what Jacob's trouble is. And it's actually has nothing to do with that. Uh, very surprising you might find as well. First, let me just read you the, the scripture where this comes from. It comes from Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. It says, Alas, for that day is great, so that no one is like, in, like it, and even to the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Well, you have to back up just a little bit, and we have to look at this a, a little bit deeper. In fact, before we do, let me go on to verse 8. And it says, For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and I will burst thy bonds and strangers, so no more serve themselves of him. Break his yoke from off thy neck? Well, you know, this is a long, long battle between Esau and Jacob. And by the way, the whole thing about Jacob's trouble is not limited to only the house of Judah. This is the house of Judah and the house of Israel. We're going to go back into that in just a moment. But you have to back up really to Genesis. When, if you remember, when Jacob stole his brother's birthright, Esau's birthright, his father told him, Isaac said, that there would be a yoke around, your, around his neck until he got the dominion. Well, Esau got the dominion. When did he get the dominion? He got it under the Babylonian Empire. But you have to go back even further. You have to understand, and this is what we'll go into later, how Esau gets that, because Esau is raised by Pharaoh, a sole surviving heir during the days of King David, uh, who escapes into Egypt, raised by an Egyptian Pharaoh, then marries his sister's, uh, or excuse me, his wife's sister, goes uh, into Syria, becomes the king of Assyria. And by the way, that's also, we find in scripture that that's where the yoke is on his neck as well as the Assyrian. And then we find out later that Jeremiah writes about to the house of Judah to come under the yoke of Babylon. Well, then finally we find Esau is equated to the Roman Empire and comes against uh, Israel and ransacks the house of Judah completely. The house of Israel was taken out actually 780 years before that time. That was, of course, the yoke of Esau being put on the house of Israel. But when finally the Romans themselves under Titus takes and collapses the house of Judah in 70 AD, burns and ransacks the temple, and sends the remaining house of Judah into exile, both house of Israel and house of Judah now have become, come under the yoke of Esau. We find this very interesting when you read in Jeremiah, especially the chapters previous to chapter 30, so much scripture is spoken about how that the Babylonian yoke goes on the house of Israel. But in this particular case, when we get to Jeremiah chapter 30, it says here in verse 1, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Thus speak the Lord of God, the God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. Not just the house of Judah. Okay? <clears throat> And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words of the Lord spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Remember how the scripture says they will say peace and safety, and, or peace, peace, and there is no peace? That's what Rome's doing. Because Rome is modern-day Babylon, and they have the yoke around Israel's neck. Not just, or Jacob's neck, I should say, both 
houses, the house of Judah and the house of Israel. So regardless of where they are in the world, the trembling is about to begin, not just in the modern state of Israel, but it'll be a global trembling because it clearly says this in the scripture. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask you now and see whether a man doth travail with a child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it, and even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it, for it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and I will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. You know how that yoke is broken off of Jacob? And Jacob represents 12 tribes of Israel, not just the house of Judah, friends. It's your two witnesses. They're the ones that will break the yoke of Rome off of your neck, the Babylonian empire. So Jacob's trouble will not just be limited to the house of, Israel, house of Judah living in the land of Israel today. Not to mention those Jesuits, those Babylonian kings that are ruling the land right now in Israel are working for the Pope of Rome. Do you think that is of God? Think about these things. We're going to be bringing this out even deeper with you. Put on your seatbelt. Get ready tomorrow night. We'll be back right here on Israeli News Live with the news, bringing you some more breaking information. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. I have not been able to get the emails out to you that are coming to the conference in Orlando, but yes, we do have the extra space. Send in your emails if you want to make it. I still have reserved seating, but we got enough to seat another at least 50 more people. Shalom, shalom. I'm Stephen Benoon. In a world of Ain Shalom, there is no peace.